guys welcome down to Jervis Bay and to Iluka Beach which is at the northern end of a place called Green Patch which you can just see over my shoulder and the reason I've come to this beautiful location today is in the expectations of a bit of sunset color whether that will come to pass is yet to be seen there is that gap there so it's looking pretty hopeful but you never really know how these things are going to turn out but however it goes i'm very happy to be here this is such a beautiful place jervis bay it's off season it's middle of winter here there are a few people down the other end of the beach where i'm heading in a minute but that's okay uh, and we're just going to enjoy ourselves in this stunning stunning location i mean just look at this <laughs> just beautiful So where I'm actually shooting this now is inside the Buddhary National Park. You do have to pay park fees to come in here, but I'm a local, so I've got the old two year pass, so I just drive in. But it's such a, a beautiful location, superb for landscape photography. I've been here many, many, many times. The only downside, in fact, to this spot is that drones are completely banned. It's a Commonwealth Park here in Australia and you can't fly your drones at all, which is a bit of a bummer. I would love to put the drone up, particularly on a night like this where there's no wind at all. Just stunning. Well, that's how it's looking at the moment. There is a gap further down. You can see these trees here. Just, where are we? Just here. Very fine, faintly illuminated, which suggests there is another gap. We need the gap to come up and backlight these clouds. The bay is famous for the quality of the water. It's amazingly clear, which makes it very popular with snorkelers and scuba divers and that kind of stuff. In fact, I did my own open water paddy diving certification right here in the bay. A little tip for you if you want to know whether there's going to be a lot of good color in the sky at sunset look in the opposite direction because it colors progressively round and so if you've got color that way then the odds are you're going to get color in the direction of the actual sunset and as you can see it's looking fairly muted there is some pink color in these clouds up here so Maybe. <laughs> Walking down to now, at the end of the beach here is where the main campsite caravan area is, which you can just see peeking through the woods here. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful camping location, very popular. We did want to come down here to book well ahead to get yourself a pitch. Okay, prognosis not great at the moment. The colour has gone for the most part. It was orange over there when I arrived, but it's now disappeared. There's a possibility it will come back and get one of those kind of late burner skies. I hope spring's eternal. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm standing in the creek at the moment. It's not too cold. It gets really cold just before the tourist season starts when it's had a winter cool off, but it's still losing its heat at the moment. So it's not too bad, but this is the spot I come to. You've got this beautiful tree here uh, overhanging the creek. the water here is very kind of tan colored because of all the trees and vegetation that's kind of leaching into the water which ruins it a little bit but not massively so and it's just a beautiful spot 
Uh, such is the popularity of Jervis Bay that we've got tourists here. It's midwinter. Not been a particularly warm day, but they come all year round because it's such a beautiful spot. One thing I've learned through bitter experience is to never pack up too soon and just sort of give up because you never really know what's going to happen. One time I was down at this particular beach and the, uh, the sunset fizzed like it is looking like it's doing today and then a humongous pod of dolphins rocked up uh, and we're just swimming sort of slowly through the water here which is a beautiful sight so you never know. It ain't over till it's over. It is in in the bay at the moment, but it is shallow enough to wade across this creek around that way. And if the sky colours up, that's what I'll do. I'll go around here and shoot sort of underneath this tree. The sun has well and truly set and there's no sign of colour. Now, typically speaking, about 10 minutes after sunset is when it peaks. So if there's going to be any colour at all in the sky, that's when it's going to happen. There is a very slight purple tinge in those clouds but I'm not holding my breath <laughs> It's now 10 minutes past sunset and I'm going to call it and head home. I've got a couple of nice little shots I think very early on but that's it. But this is what photography is all about. This is part and parcel of photography and it's why AI is not photography because this is the experience. It's going somewhere with your camera in the expectation of getting photographs and sometimes you don't get photographs. With AI, you always get a image, but it ain't a photograph. So this is what photography is all about for me. And it's why I will not stop doing this, why I enjoy doing this. And here's to the next one. Tell you what guys, probably need to get me asked down to Specsavers. We were just creeping up on what I thought was a wallaby. Over <laughs> here, yeah, it's a bloody tree stump. Somebody's playing the sand. Oh dear me. Well, let's see what sunrise is like. 